we do a lot of Foley recording here for our shows as well. Um, when we're when we're doing horse footsteps, um, my Foley artist Brian, you should see him do this because he he brings in a couple of rocks. These are, he doesn't do the coconut thing. I mean, that's crazy. He brings in rocks, we'll pour a big pile of dirt and, and he'll just start banging this stuff around. I mean, the dust is flying, but he makes a pretty good horse step. But there are really times when you want to have that power, like when the, the footsteps are slamming down in front of the screen and you want to pitch it down. Now, a lot of people would do that later on, but I like to, I like to pitch it while we're recording the Foley because I want to sort of hear how it sounds and, and that way Brian maybe can adjust his performance a little to make the best media sound. So we use very pitch while we're recording Foley. It's on one of my presets. I can have, uh, I have a Foley preset that, that uh, has a little bit of compression and stuff when I want it. And at the touch of a button, I have the same preset but with very pitch. And I have two channels of that, so we can take the two microphones that I have that we always have a close and a far. And I can actually vary them independently and pitch down the close channel, and, or perhaps pitch them both down. And it gives me that fatness, and I still get the presence, uh, because I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not pitching a, a, a frequency-limited uh, uh, sampled sound. It hasn't been hacked off at 20 kilohertz. It's got the full range of all of my equipment here. So when I pitch down uh, through, through, the, through the algorithms in here, it maintains as much frequency response as you can possibly get out of that signal. And it still sounds natural. Water sounds, when we're, when we're doing swimming pool things, we just have a little bucket of water. I mean, it's kind of funny looking. But once you pitch it down, through the, through the algorithms in here, it takes on this wonderful quality. And if you go low enough, suddenly you're underwater. The splashing is not in this room. Actually, we set up, we have two other rooms here. We've got my uh, office next door, which is the primary Foley room because it's very quiet. But we've got a much larger space uh, just on the other side. And we set up a nice big tub of water. It takes a couple of minutes to, to get the water because there's no sink in there. So we have, you know, jugs of water going back and forth, but we fill it up. And we literally put up plastic and sheets and get everything that's, that's damageable out of the way. So the drum set moves off to that side, and the piano moves off to that side, and he goes to town. I'm telling you, there's water everywhere. There have been days where we've had to add fans in there for, for the next two days just to dry it out before the next session. Whenever we're doing um, uh, crowd, crowd walking, Brian loves to change his shoes. He'll give every character in a crowd a different shoe, but I am one step ahead of him by pitching certain shoes up and down just to give that variety that you don't get with one performer, one microphone, one setup. Uh, it's really one of my favorite tricks, and it's why I love having this remote right next to me. It's, it's a fabulous box. Okay. I can't say it enough. It's a fabulous box. I got to admit, Foley is not one of my favorite things to do. My wife hears me complain about it after every Foley session, but the results, when it all comes together, that's when it's fun. It's when you hear the stuff played back and you go, wow, we did that. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, and TC helps helps make that feeling happen.